Hi, right, y'all. It's AGP here in this Wednesday. So, you know, it's time for another AGP video. Anyways, so yeah, y'all know we were getting this inside the series <laughs> from Naughty Dog's employees and Neil Druckmann. So I just, this is the inside the gameplay, uh, gameplay trailer. I did the inside the story trailer before, so y'all should go check that out. If you want to see it, I will leave the, or oh, I'll have it as a card and then, you know, have it in the end screen. But I'll catch y'all right now. We're just gonna, you know what, let's just, let's get into this. Mature. Blood and gore, intense violence, nudity, sexual content. I can never do it in time. Under here. What the gameplay needs to do is immerse you in the world, give you as many interesting actions to survive in this world and overcome obstacles. And obstacles could be infected, it could be other people, it could just be the environment, it could be rushing water, anything that could happen in this post-apocalyptic world. Are you clean? I think so. But again, like, if she gets bit, I don't think but it does But more than anything, anything, it needs to put you in Ellie's shoes. That so, you're experiencing what Ellie's no. experiencing, making you feel what she feels. Because the more we do that, the more the emotional beats of the story work for us. And the more they work for us in this very unique way that only works in video games. I hear you inside the gameplay. So we're going to get a little info about The gameplay the philosophy gameplay. of The Last of Us Part Two is Dude, putting no. you in the shoes of Ellie and everything that that means. It means giving you a threat constantly, as this world has. It means giving you the hard choices. Because this game takes place in such a hostile universe, and our characters are pushed to hostile, do yeah. really difficult things, we want to put you in alignment with those choices. We want you to understand how hard certain decisions were for these characters, because they're hard for you. What's interesting with that is like, is it like, I would the say or like the overarching the philosophy of how we approach the designing the game that kind of hard decision. mechanically is how can we take things to the next next level. Hold this. <laughs> Everything kind of comes out of the story. And how do we do it through systems? Of course, of course. So one is you have to feel the pressure of survival survive by the skin of my teeth? How do I use all these, all the scrap around me? Any kind of bullet, any kind of rag, any kind of bottle of alcohol. I need it all. How do we give I you that sense of being a survivor in this world? I just recently played the first one again and I had moments where I did not get enough, enough um, resources. We need to craft. That looked like a new type of effect that they keep. Ellie is very small compared to Joel and more nimble. Only showing us bits of. How do we make you feel like you're not the strongest bit. person in the room, but you still should be able to rise to the challenge and survive, you know, a fight with a bunch of people that are all bigger than you? This is how it should be, but, um, you know. You so therefore it meant creating a character and systems and mechanics that allow you to be much more nimble. And that's more. where we added um, a jump button. <laughs> Maybe a little more tactical at how you maneuver. Well, first thing we had a climber button, you. but not really jumping. And here, Ellie can jump. The combat scenarios are much more vertical, where Ellie can use elevation to her advantage. Prone is a huge, huge one. Prone, obviously, it means to lay flat on the ground. Uh, something so simple, again, something that in real life you'd be able to do. Letting the player have access to all their weapons, all the items, crafting, everything, while in that position. Jeez. And That's really tough, just, though creates to to so like many that. more emergent uh, things in gameplay. Now that we have this other state them. that the player could be in, which are very low to the ground, Angles you can how get else can we use this other than just hiding like in things. vegetation? We're like, well, there's a lot of man-made things or different structures that have collapsed that allow just enough space for you to crawl under, and which means that now, as enemies are looking for you, you can crawl under things and hide and it's just one more way to assess your environment and use it to Ellie's advantage. We'll be using that to now, escape because you can hide under things, we gave the Whoa. enemies, we made them smarter and gave them the ability to look under things. So while you might hide somewhere and be safe for a while, eventually they're going to start looking under stuff. And if you're hiding under a truck and they spot you, they're going to yank you out and then try to kill you. I'm scared. Can y'all imagine that? Y'all think you're safe? Because they, they knew it was coming to yank. They were showing that on purpose in the trailer. But imagine looking a totally different direction, right? And then somebody just comes and yanks your shit. Dodging is a big one because now with dodge, 
anytime you're in a you're in a a scuffle, you have a chance to get away. You have a chance to counterattack. It lets escape be an option as well. Sometimes you just gotta run. That's bad. They make alien ninja. Another part of this world, which is sometimes the threat is so overpowering that you just have to get away. When you are partially hidden, or you're like you're in grass, that means people from afar can't see you, but people from closer can kind of see you. They will eventually acquire you. You're not completely hidden when you're in grass. She went into the grass. What's that? And it makes you as a player become much more aware of your surroundings. Jump, prone, dodge, you know, all these things feed into prone, both exploration dodge. and uh, combat because it lets us expand the space. If the size of spaces can be bigger, the intricacy of spaces can be more complex, and it still works exactly as you would expect. So in other words... So when it came to our level design, we really wanted to challenge ourselves to make a world that really felt like a real space as much as we possibly could and didn't feel like a series of combat encounters and exploration spaces and then combat encounters that felt like a, a hall of horrors or something, um, but something that really felt like a space that you could Chef. explore that seemed like a legitimate uh, urban environment. And that pushed us to make our level design uh, even more open than it was in the first game, which for us at the time was, uh, first uh, was pretty open. First game was pretty in this open. game, we've gone so far in but this was making more the open. level design open uh, that there are actually entire story moments, entire combat encounters, like full scripted sequences that you may completely miss. That kind of sucks. And there are things that we feel like, like I want to see all of them. Even though a portion of our player base possible. may never see them. I'm going to play more than once anyway. Uh, the so. fact that when you do encounter them, you feel like you discovered them, it lends them this charm. It is 100 magic gigs. That I think it's so unique to games that, you know, this, be this happened big. to me because of what I did and what the place I explored to. And that's at launch. So whatever updates Crafting is very have. much about a payoff to exploration, meaning that when you enter new spaces, you want to look around for supplies. You want to open drawers and cabinets um, and look for different things that will allow you to craft either items that can help you heal, items that can help you attack multiple enemies at once, such as the Molotov um, or the landmine that Ellie can craft. Items that can help you augment your weapons, oh, like we silencer have. for her pistol, um, or craft new kinds of ammo. It also gives us tons of interesting gameplay choices and overlaps that you can do in any moment and in, in on the fly. We try to be a game that wants you to make a lot of different decisions in combat as possible. And the way that we've expanded the recipe roster and all of the recipes and how they interact with each other is carefully chosen for the different ingredients and making sure that you always have these interesting decisions to make. We put a much stronger emphasis on the importance of the choices you make in the long term for your character. How does that work? Like you get different outcomes depending on what you do. Through the weapon I mean, upgrade system, we do have games like that. System. There aren't enough but. resources in a single playthrough to fully upgrade your character. I didn't think so. I thought it was tripping in the first last You're going to have to live with and we wanted to make sure that all of the choices that you made had a really noticeable and tangible effect on the way that you play. Yeah. See, what's really great is that they upped the ante on the stealth too, because I was wondering the first one why we had no silence. You feel a so that's greater dope, kinship dope, with yeah. Ellie because you are living with decisions that you've already made. Like you, you are continuing this through line of her journey through this world, uh, and the moment-to-moment -moment gameplay is influenced by that in a way that we haven't before. The realization that your choices have these long-term consequences is very much like the nature of the, the narrative of the game. When they say that, is it like if you kill uh, someone? that the mechanics are supporting that. Is it, is it like those people, whoever was with them will possibly come after you later in the game? Because that'd be kind of wild. Like, it would also make sense. I mean, that's kind of what happened in the first one, but it was built into the actual game and story. So it would be funny if, like, depending on what you do early on in the game could depend on some outcomes later. But that looks pretty crazy, y'all. So they added a prone, they added a jump, they added a dodge. Obviously, the stealth is up to Annie. You can craft silencers now, and you can hide in the grass. You can go prone in the grass. Remember, don't think that just because you're prone in the grass means don't nobody can see you, and they can drag you out from under objects. So we're going to have to play smart and not die. But...
it looks lit so i can't wait june 19th 2020 um i'm gonna make a video about the ps4 pro le edition thing that comes out the same day the game drops which looks kind of cool to me but i'm gonna catch y'all next time don't forget to like comment and subscribe i'm gonna catch y'all next time all right Give me a little bit of time.